and good day everyone it's Grizz I'm back in the garage back for some more fun with the Punisher so um, yeah what happened since the last one um, since the last video we found that um, rubber seal which had popped out on one of the brake uh, calipers which had caused one of the pistons to freeze Coming back to the brake caliper, I've actually removed it. But play the little video, Grizz, of, of you pumping out. Doing the pump, pump, pump it. I pumped out the pistons um, and just put a piece of metal in between the two, in between the other pistons to stop them from fully popping out. This will basically um, enable me to easily remove the brake pistons when I disassemble the brake calipers. Right, so that is that. I've pumped that just a tiny bit more since that video was filmed. I cleaned them up um, and just put WD-40 on them to ease the removal. But something that I have come to the realization of, can I find it, there it is. Right, this is the good brake caliper. I mean, it's not an amazing. This is like, this was done like 11 years ago and it's just seen a bit of abuse since. But this one, the finish on it, has not gone like this one and the reason why this one has gone like this is not because brake fluid has got on it it's because it's got too hot and the reason it got too hot was because of that brake seal which is poking out now what would have happened is the brake seal would have caused that piston to freeze to kind of go out and and not return out and that would have put constant pressure on the brake disc, causing the brake disc and the caliper to get hot. Because if you look at this side, the whole caliper has been affected, but this side isn't half as bad as that side. I guess it's kind of slightly, but anyway, whatever. And that was the reason for the ruining of the powder coat of, of the finish on this one. To be honest, as I said, in an ideal world, I'll be get these refurbished or upgrade them but it's not in the budget at the moment so I'm going to refurbish them myself I'm going to leave the powder coat as it is for now um, but that will get some attention in the future I've got some new seals coming complete seal kit for both calipers so I'm going to strip them both down and put new uh, seals in there and uh, rebuild that and that will be ready for use again I've also got on order um, what was it a front brake master cylinder kit so I'll get that done as well today I'm just going to strip off the remainder of the brakes front brake system get that front master cylinder off um, I've got all the bits and pieces for here on for it here on the bench I'm gonna get the rest of it on the bench and then we'll move on to the engine bay get that engine bay nice and clean and hopefully get down and change those spark plugs let's see if I can get it all done in this one video Wish me luck. Right, let's get off the remainder of the front braking system, the master cylinder. And uh, those front hoses and get it all assembled on the workbench, ready for cleaning. Oh, I do like a bit of black latex. Right, that is the master cylinder off with its little little tiny this is super tiny reservoir it works though uh, ish but anyway yeah reservoir is off I've given it a wipe down I'm just gonna just put on a tiny bit of brake cleaner just to remove any remnants of brake fluid because it's going to be a few days until I have the cylinder rebuild kit arrive and I don't want the brake fluid kind of eating into the finish on any of these parts um, so yeah right 
Let me show you all the other bits that are taken off as well. Right, so calipers, you've seen those. This is all the uh, brake uh, pads covered in copper grease, but nothing horrendous. That's all gonna get a clean up uh, before it goes back on the bike. Um, yeah, I also put a little bit of WD-40 on this and give it a wipe down just to stop it from, uh, I call it like almost like conditioning the metal, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, all these bits are all going to get a clean up. There's the front hoses. And now the bike is brakeless on the front. So, yeah. Let's uh, get on now. And now I can focus on this dirty area. Um, I need to take the battery out. I've not taken the battery out, naughty grizz. So let's get this um, engine bay cleaned up and get down to those spark plugs and get them changed. Remember that thing? That thing that we couldn't work out what it was, if it was like an alarm or a mobiliser or something. Like I said previously, there is a live and a neutral, a neutral and earth wire. Um, I'm gonna connect them, let's see what happens. Or a blow an eardrum or something. Right, mind your ears. Let me jump. So that. I reckon it sounded like it came back from here, but it's definitely some kind of a mobiliser or alarm. Can we retrace that? It's going back to here, so there's something under the seat. I'm going to leave it in place because if there is something connected on here that I don't know about, maybe there's some kind of switch under here. Meh. Can't see anything. Well, I'll leave this on here for now. Um, uh, we'll have a, a, a further look at that. But anyway, I'm going to get this ready for cleaning up. Let's get the battery out. Right. Here's the battery, looks kind of new, um, but I'm going to put it on charge, it hasn't been on charge for a while, so let's get it on charge and um, make sure it's nicely juiced up, ready for when we're ready to go. So I'm just using a heavy duty charger, all my uh, bike chargers are uh, in use at the moment, so I've got to buy another one, but anyway, that is that on, it's showing, put it on 12 volts 2 amp which is a low slow charge um, which will basically is better for the battery when you're charging um, and it's showing it's 75% full so we'll leave that anyway let's get on with the engine cleaning Right, engine bay decluttered. I've taken off all those bits over there. This plastic bit actually acts, uh, not only does it stop kind of a lot of the dirt and water and, and rubbish getting up onto the engine, this also acts as a bit of an air scoop. It's uh, essential for, for making the air box and getting the airflow correctly. Um, yeah, your plastic, your rubber guard, coil packs are taken off and uh, took photos of showing myself or reminding myself where all the wires go also named some of the wiring so I know what goes where cylinder one two three and four so now I can get on and start cleaning this engine bay I've also changed the covers on the um, 
or protectors for the carbs to some black gloves because the blue ones were looking a bit brittle and broken. Put all uh, a bit of tissue in all any open pipes. I'm going to spray it all in WD-40. Obviously, I moved all the wiring loom away as well. Um, going to spray all this area in WD-40 and let it soak for a bit. And then I can hopefully start getting a toothbrush on it and give it a good clean. To be honest, I think really the, the um, carburetors could do with coming off and having a proper clean. But with the time scales I've got and the budget, it's going to have to do with just a good clean at the moment. And then at a later date, I think those carbies ought to come off and be sent off or have them professionally cleaned, let's say. Right, let's get it wet. Let's cover it in some WD-40. Yum, yum. I'm done, that is enough cleaning I believe, that'll do. Uh, the carburetors look immeasurably cleaner and uh, yeah, that'll do um, nicely. As you've seen, I just coated it all in WD-40 and then um, kind of got the tough brush on with some brake cleaner, dried all that off and then added some more WD-40 and gave it a good wipe down but everywhere is nice and clean inside of the carbs just cleaning up the carb bodies there was just a lot of dirt in there and corrosion that was starting to build up um, took out the HT leads so I can get out the spark plugs but yeah much better happy with that right it's another day on and we've got some good news I've got the rebuild kit for the master cylinder so that is superb even better news I've got the seal kit for the brake calipers and crack on and get those done and I've also got my ABBA fitting kit so I can get the bike up now on a proper stand and not have it kind of so crazily balanced like I was um, I want to do the plugs but first of all let's get it on the ABBA stand right so this is the ABBA fitting kit this is kit 21 can you see kit 21 and this will fit all fire blades from years 1992 through to 1999 uh, they all have the same frame throughout those years so let's get it out and get it onto the stand watch your fingers I'm not sure I'm gonna make this work, but this was the fitting kit for the 916. Works no problem. Slide that bit over the thread. That bit goes in there. Job done, it just slots straight into the frame. So that is the 916 kit. Um, which one is this one? I think that kit maybe came with the bike. So maybe will it go in there on it? look yes it does so that's that side this side mm. oh here we go oh look yes 
that will work. Um, yeah, matte one came with with the actual stand when I bought it. Um, I've also got a kit for Tappy's bike as well. So I need not to mix these up, don't I? Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll work it out. So that looks like that is going to work. Just need to tighten that one down. And keyed up. Right, let's get it on the bike. Sussed it out eventually. <laughs> I just popped out these adapters just to double check before I actually fit it onto the bike. This one appears to go in to this side nice, nicely ish. Not bad, kind of stays there, slots out a little bit, but obviously it's got no pressure on it. But that is, I think, going to be nice and secure when it's actually done up properly. This one, I'm not so sure about. Have a look at the other side. Right, can you see this? So this is the cup on this one. This goes over this nut here. And it's kind of like, hmm, it just doesn't really sit very well. Maybe again, with a lot of pressure on there, or some pressure there from the actual framework, is gonna be fine, but it doesn't look like it's the right size to me. But um, yeah, kit 21, hopefully it will work. Fingers crossed. Right, I did see if any of the other cups would fit, but they wouldn't. Nothing else I've got here goes near it. So let's hope Abba don't drop me bike. Right, let's get this frame on. So you've got to slide it on one side and then slide the other side on this bar and clamp it down as such. I'm really limited for space here. Hopefully I can uh, squeeze it in. Who are? Now we just slide this side on. Now we just do up this, turn this so it kind of clamps it on the bike. But I don't like overdoing it because looks it's putting a lot of stress on that on that lower joint but let's just be super careful I don't want this to fall off side stand up we've got the lifty bar here on this side um, can I have this in shot for you uh, probably not right let's just go for it Let's go for it, kids. Don't fall off the stand. It's fine. Phew, it didn't fall off. Well done, Abba. Right, that's a lot of messing around. Let's get the spark plugs done. Ooh, let's get them changed. I just put some cloths on here to protect the powder coat, but hopefully we can get them out or get the new ones in without doing too much damage. This is a really tight space, so yeah, wish me luck. Right, it's out at last. The plug is out. And as you can see, can you see that very well? Is it focusing? Yeah. It's uh, in pretty good, pretty good shape, pretty good condition. Don't know how long they've been in there. They're not crazily worn, um, but yeah, let's get some fresh plugs in. Right, I'm not gonna show the procedure for every single plug, but basically, new plug, I use just a little bit of multi-purpose grease um, and just put a dab on, like you don't, you know, maybe even less than that. It's just to kind of stop that thread from locking and kind of seizing, more so kind of like preventing any corrosion, you know? Just eases um, future 
maintenance of the bike. Right, the only thing I would say is some of these plugs are notoriously hard to get to. So if you've got uh, like a, a flexi hinge like this, <laughs> then if that's what it's called, um, it makes life a lot easier for getting them out. Plug number two, looking much the same as plug number one. I'm, I'm really happy actually, it's not running too rich or too lean. Happy with that. Plug number three, a little bit dirtier, tiny bit, a little bit of dirt around the bottom of the, uh, the plug. It did feel a little bit loose, so maybe that one could have been done up a bit tighter. Looks uh, yeah, a bit darker, but anyway, number three. Plug number four, that one's out as well, again. Looks a bit dirtier than the others. I'll place them side by side and you can have a look. Right, here's the spark plugs, uh, all out. As you've seen, this doesn't actually focus very well. But yeah, I'm questioning whether or not those are the same plugs I fitted when I built the bike um, like 11 years ago. Is that a bit better? There we go, yeah. So yeah, it's questionable. But at least there's new ones in, new plugs in. Um, take you over to the bike. I also just quickly popped in the HT leads. So they are in, all the leads are in. Um, yeah, I'll take all this tape off once I've uh, put all the wiring back together again. But happy with that, that is enough for today. Right, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's instalment. Join me on the next one when we get these brake calipers stripped down and we get some new rubber seals in there and hopefully fix the uh, brake calipers and have them back up into to good functioning use. And also I'll do that service on the master cylinder as well. Right, I'll catch you on the next one guys. Take care, stay safe and thanks for watching.